Welcome to Rats, Mice and Kids, the show where parents become the experts at teaching science to their kids. Hey everyone, I'm Amelia. And I'm Annie. Amelia, this lockdown makes me feel like it's been a century since I've seen you. But I love, I love that through the power of the internet, we can be right next to each other. <laughs> and I love that I can control your camera remotely. Actually, you're looking a little bit see-through there. I'm going to tinker with your green screen. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Annie! Oh. Annie! You made me disappear! Oh, 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 sorry about Annie. that. Um, uh, Annie. uh. I guess things have to. Oh. Wait, it's better. <laughs> I guess things have to get worse before they get better. Hmm? Is that a lockdown metaphor? Yeah, you like it. <laughs> I love it. Um, what is it? A tinkering metaphor as well. Yes, because our episode today is on tinkering. I've been reading up on what tinkering experts have to say, and I found a fun game we can play. What's that? Well, Amelia, I hope you have your maker camera set up because uh, we're going to make a balance sculpture. So with anything that you can find around your house, you're going to need to find some stuff to balance. Like work, family, uh, health, study, finances during a pandemic? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we can throw back to our episode three on narrative and prescribe meaning to these objects for sure. Well, while you're looking around for your sculptural items, I can tell you a little bit about the literature on tinkering as a way of learning. Uh, you're going to need to go look in the shed, I reckon. Good idea. Oh, you... Oh! <laughs> wow, this is a resourceful shed. I can see you've got a lot of objects there. Um, Annie... I'm guessing that the idea of making for learning isn't a new one, right? Yeah, you'd be right. Uh, it has become a bit of a movement though in recent uh, times in education. Rather than it being about us learning a particular sort of scientific concept, while we could actually do that with this activity, we could talk about the centre of balance for an object, what shapes are stronger than others or what materials are stronger. but. Tinkering has benefits more so in the actual making part, the doing part. It's more about gaining an understanding of the world around us rather than acquiring specific scientific knowledge. Like that workshop that we delivered on paper planes. I really liked it when the kids kind of took it upon themselves to actually totally ignore our instructions and just tinker with their own designs. They came up with some pretty crazy stuff. I um, found an onion for my sculpture and a banana and um, a 10 kilo plate as well. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm gonna let those things represent grocery shopping. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. I respect your creative vision. So yeah, kids are naturals at this, like you said, with their paper plane making. They tinker everywhere. What's interesting is some of the literature around tinkering discusses how it can be misconstrued with prescribed making. So, for example, your teacher sets the tasks where you're assigned to make a bridge and your bridge has to hold a certain amount of weight. And then you make the bridge, you build it and, it, and you get assessed on it. I remember doing that in high school. Yeah. While it's making, it's not as playful as tinkering, which doesn't necessarily have a plan in mind. Or if it does, it's a rough idea and it's subject to change. So, wait, in our paper plane workshop, we tell the kids how to make those paper planes. That's putting weight on the product rather than on the process. Yeah, which would not be described as tinkering per se, as we're imposing our design on them. But I guess it is later down the track once they go home um, and then they build and design new ones with that tinkering really comes into play because we've kind of given them the foundation and then they can go away and do whatever they want to those planes, whether that be scrunch it into a little ball, throw it into a tree or uh, hide it under the table. Yeah. I mean, you can so start. Tinkering. Sorry, what were you going to No, say? you go, you go. Oh, Zoom profile. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I guess tinkering can just be pretty messy and that's totally okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you can start without a goal. In fact, it's actually better to focus on a theme rather than a challenge. It broadens your creativity and I just find 
holding materials can help me come up with a project? <laughs> like, uh, this? Or this, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you can make your balance sculpture out of those. <laughs> Maybe I can. Okay then, in the spirit of tinkering, let's not plan. Let's just build and have a chat about how parents might be able to optimize tinkerability. Yeah, let's do it. Well, Resnick and Rosenbaum identified three ways. First, through activities that provide instant feedback, like paper plane folding or music making, compared to something like baking, where you have to wait. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> the second one being able to undo, redo, and save experimental processes. So they call this fluid experimentation. And use the example of Lego blocks, where you can click and collect sections and put them aside and come back to them to innovate them on, their, on them later. With fewer barriers and setup time, you also get to experimental parts more quickly. So I've learned that if I leave my piano lid open, I'm more likely to just sit down and tinker on it when I walk past, rather than if it's closed and it's got books on it. That's so true. What's the third way though? To have a wide variety of materials. So unfortunately, being a tinkerer kind of makes you a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> Not like that's the case already. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> How many plants do you have, Amelia? <laughs> too many, too many. We're not going to talk about that right now. Um, I guess we also can't underestimate the power of being able to just kind of step back from a project, think on it for a little while, and then come back later. I think that process is also just equally important. And also posing questions instead of answers, as hard as that can sometimes be. You missed it. We've actually got an episode on questioning. Annie, behold my sculpture. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I love what you've done with it. <laughs> Thanks so much. It was such a fun process, kind of just tinkering and making and seeing what I could come up with. What things could you use to tinker with your kids? We've got some things to suggest other than making your own balance sculpture or paper planes. You could make homemade musical instruments. Who doesn't love recorders? Right? Stop motion. A security system. Woo -woo. Mini catapult or perhaps a pinball machine. That'd be cool. Or in keeping in theme of our rats, mice and kids, you could make a mouse trap. Annie, that sounds dangerous, but I like the idea. Annie and I would love your feedback, so please get in touch in the comments or find us on Facebook and Instagram at Rats, Mice and Kids. Happy tinkering! Happy tinkering! <laughs>